and uh, you'll notice a lot of times when Brother uh, Mike is reading uh, the Psalms to us, he pretty much just lets the Word uh, speak for itself. And I believe tonight, if we'll just follow along the Word of God tonight, we'll see how that it does simply speak for itself. And I just want to add those thoughts that God gives to us and uh, pray to be a blessing to you tonight. So 2 Timothy uh, chapter number 3, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, then we'll just look right into the Word of God tonight. Father, we love you. Lord, we're so thankful, Father, for you loving us. And Lord, we realize that's the only reason we love you tonight. Lord, because you first loved us. Lord, I pray, God, tonight as we try to look into the Word of God. Father, I pray you would encourage us. I pray you would challenge our hearts and challenge our souls tonight. Lord, I pray we'd see something. Father, would help us to draw closer to you. Lord, to be more <coughs> for you. Have a desire, Father, Lord, to uh, live a life that would be honoring and pleasing to you. Father, I thank you for these that uh, drove out tonight. Lord, made a, uh, the effort and put forth the effort, Father, to be here. I pray you'd encourage them. Lord, speak to their hearts tonight. Father, I pray you'd bless those that I'm able to be with us tonight. Father, maybe you're watching online. I pray you'll touch them, encourage them. Please touch those that are sick and afflicted in our church and our church family, Father. God, I pray you meet their needs. Amen. Father, we'll sure love you. We thank you, Father, for that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter number 3 tonight. And uh, y'all pray for me. I thought I'd over everything, but I've got a sore throat again. Cough it every now and again. Uh, but I'm hanging in there. All right? All right. And try not to breathe on you, cough on you. And I'll try not to shake your hand. All right? And uh, so just give you a big air hug and say, I love you tonight. Well, let's look at the Word of God. Mine says here, if I could tie it tonight, it would simply be this. It still works. It, it still works. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, when, when, whenever we see things happening and things taking place around us, uh, I believe tonight if we would be honest with ourselves, uh, we simply forget a lot of times, or uh, if we could go, if we go a little farther and be honest, is we never noticed it in the Word of God, or we never... Uh, paid it close attention or take, taking note of it uh, in the Word of God. But I want you to understand tonight, and you'll see this as you read through the Scripture, there is nothing taking place in the world we're living in tonight, nor will there anything take place in our world tonight uh, before the coming of the Lord that He's not already told us about in His Word. Uh, somewhere, somehow, in the Word of God tonight, you can find it. There, there's nothing tonight that... Uh, catches God off guard, and if we're reading Amen. and studying the Bible tonight, and that doesn't mean you have to be some great scholar. I mean, if you're just putting forth the effort and reading your Bible and studying your Bible tonight, uh, there's really nothing that ought to catch you an eye off guard as far as we never heard anything like that, or we didn't know that was going to happen. We didn't see that coming. It's, it's already been recorded uh, in the Word of God tonight. Now, uh, <clears throat> you may never expect to see a a tornado or earthquake or a hurricane in Surrey County or on Mountain Park Road. But if we do, would you not agree tonight that we've already found that in the Word of God? Uh, there's going to be war and rumor war. There's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. I, I mean, it's going to happen in, in places that you never expected it. God's Word's already made that promise to us tonight. So let's just take notice that the Word of God, it's still Word. I don't want you to understand. Amen. In the world we're living in tonight, that uh, is being a child of God, uh, honestly, we ought to stick out more now than we ever have before. Amen. I mean, what I'm saying is people ought to be able to know you're a Christian, you believe the Lord, you're born again believer right now more than any other time in history that I can find. That it, ought to be, it ought to be noticeable tonight. And the reason being is the world is simply getting darker. And if the world's getting darker... God's people are still living for Him. That means the light's getting bright. Yep. Amen. Amen. Uh, the dark, uh, if, if we turned off all the lights in this building tonight, except for if we do it, except for these two chandeliers here, would you not agree? Those lights would look a whole lot brighter in the dark than they do with all these other lights shining around. So if we're really shining for the Lord and the world's really getting darker, then we ought to be more noticeable now that we ever had before. So let's look at the Word of God. It's still worth it tonight. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. 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 It's still worth it. All right? yep. Let's look at the Word of God. And uh, there's, uh, there's only 17 verses, so we'll read them all, all right? at least once. <laughs> <laughs> this know also 
that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despises of those that are good. I want to say tonight it's still worth it. The reason being <clears throat> that it's still worth, worth it tonight is because of perilous times. Boy, aren't you glad tonight that when you read those first three verses, if you're really a born-again believer tonight, that ought not to describe who you are tonight. Amen. Verse 1, 2, and 3 ought not describe. Why is it still worth it tonight? Because if it were not for him, I'd be described right there in one of those yep. three verses. Yeah, exactly. tonight. Let's notice what your Bible says. Yeah, have you ever seen a time that it's any more obvious than the day that we're living in that men shall be lovers of their own self? Boy, isn't that where we're living today? I mean, the world is for their self. Yes, and if we're not careful, you know what happens <coughs> as a born-again believer? You know what happens when we begin to live worldly or fleshly or our own desires? We begin to be lovers of ourselves. Why is there such a battle? <coughs> a lot of times between our will and the will of God. It's because we love ourselves. Yes, sir. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and doing it God's way, uh, we may have to suffer. We may have to give up something. We may have to sacrifice some time or uh, maybe even some money or maybe even ourselves. And if, if we're not careful, the reason that we battle that is because we love ourselves. Uh, we love our time. We love who we spend it with. And a lot of times we're not careful. Uh, it gets in the way. The Bible, notice what the Bible says. Covetous. And uh, I'll be honest with you today. I've never seen a time that covetous, coveting is any more <coughs> rampant than it is in the day and hour we live in. The reason being is because social media is hot wild. Yep. And we see everything everybody has and we want it. Amen. Amen. I, I, already, I already told you. I'm going to try to not make this a downer message. I'm just trying to tell you this for we're living. Yeah. Right. In the last days, <coughs> I'm not telling you that tonight is the last night. I'm not telling it. But I can't tell you that it won't be. Right. But I can tell you this. We are in the last days. Why? Amen. That preacher, they've been saying that for years. Yeah, but if you look at your Bible tonight and what I'm reading to you and argue that we're not in the last days, we are in the last time. We are in perilous times. Notice what he says. He says, covetous, boasters, proud. Boy, have you ever seen a day that it's all about me? <clears throat> yeah, man. That was your opportunity right there, shall you? Amen. <laughs> when I said it's all about that's, that's, It's all about us, right? I mean, it, uh, boasters and, and proud. And then notice what the Bible says. <clears throat> Blasphemy. Isn't it amazing? That even in our churches, we have almost got to the place that, I know, I know this ain't going to sound popular when I say, but we've almost got to the place that uh, we don't really know if it's God or not. Come on, brother. You're right. Now, you know what that is? That's blasphemy. Amen. If, 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 if we, as God's children, don't know what the movement of the Holy Spirit is, how's the world going? <laughs> yes, sir. And if we see God move and we don't believe it's God, you know what that is? That's blasphemy. That's saying it ain't of God. It's not, it's not God. Now, I will admit tonight, everybody that puts on a suit ain't a preacher. Yeah, man, everybody puts on a dress. Uh, 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 every woman that puts on a dress is not a God with lady. I'm going to say it that way. If it's just anybody that puts on a dress, they may have problems, right? But I'm just saying, every lady that puts on a dress or every woman that puts on a dress is not a God with lady. Does that make good sense? Every man puts on a suit is not a preacher, not a... Not a born again believer. But can I say this tonight? Notice it. I'm glad God is still working. I'm glad God is still yeah. on the throne. And Amen. if we're his children tonight, we ought to know that it's the work of the Lord. Amen. And uh, we cut up and carry on in my house over this, especially uh, me with charity. But I, I just want to love you enough to tell you the truth tonight. I'm not picking on charity. I'm just trying to tell you the truth tonight. Hey, listen, uh, even charity shared a text with me last night that, uh, she just wanted me to help give some information to somebody who's asking a question. And do you realize tonight that what Satan wants is for our young people to walk around confused? Yes, sir. You're right. You do yeah, realize you tonight that Satan is the author of confusion. Yeah. So please be careful 
have you used that word? That that that's is that's the signature move of the adversary. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's his signature move. Move. What's the signature move of the move of the Holy Ghost? It is to convict us and to draw us to a saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the signature move of the Holy Ghost of God. Well, what's the very opposite of that? It is to confuse you and get you to a place you don't know if it's God or the devil speaking. Well, my friend, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. And a stranger than a boy. Well, aren't you glad that the shepherd knows the sheep and the sheep knows the voice Amen. of the shepherd? Amen. Just a few weeks ago, I was with a, another man of God. And I really believe he is a man of God. I, I believe the facility and the church he pastors, I don't agree with all that. Uh, but I felt like that man himself is an individual. I felt like he's a good man. I enjoyed being with him. <coughs> we actually was in a funeral together. But he said something at the uh, graveside that I have not forgotten. He said that uh, he, he raised some sheep uh, years ago when, when he was younger. He raised some sheep and he was on, I think he said he's in his 80s if I'm not mistaken. And, and uh, he, uh, he had raised some sheep and he said uh, they, uh, the town that he lived in would always call him when they had troubled boys in the community and they'd get him to come out and work on his sheep farm. And so what he said, he said what I'd always do, and he was sharing this with the uh, with the congregation, with the family, talking about the shepherd, Psalm 23. And he said, those young boys would come. And he said, when night was getting ready to fall, he said, I'd send them young boys out there. And I'd say, just call the sheep back to the barn. All you got to do is go out there and stand at the gate, call them back to the barn. If they won't come, you just clap, and they'll come back. He said, I knew when I sent them out there that those sheep were not going to come because they don't know their voice. Amen. And he said, but I would always let them go out there and I'd leave them out there 15, 20 minutes to get dark and the coyotes would start howling and they'd get nervous because they're afraid they're going to lose the preacher's shoes. And he said, about that time, I'd walk out there and I'd, I'd call and here come them sheep running to that gate. And he said, every time, them young boys ask a question, how's this working? It's an open door for him to witness to them about the voice of the Lord. Here's what he said. He said, whenever I called them sheep in, he said, I'd stand there at the gate, and he said, I'd watch each one of them come in. And he said, now all them young boys, you know, it was just a sheep. Everyone was quiet. Everyone got a black mask on them. Everybody was telling them, saying they all look alike. He said, but I could tell which one it was. And he said, another thing I did stand at that gate is I had a, 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 a tub of anointing oil. And he said, if any of them got hurt while he's out there today, got to get some fit, that's a perfect time for me to rub that oil on them as it's coming through that gate. Boy, I want you to notice what the Bible says. The Bible says here, boasters, proud, and blasphemy, and blasphemy simply me, not believing that the Lord is still doing it. Boy, aren't you glad that there's a lot of things in this world that are hurting us and that'll cut us and that'll wound us? But aren't you glad that his sheep still know his voice tonight? Yeah. Hey, listen, we ought not be yeah, running to just any old stranger tonight. We ought not be running to the old thing in this world trying to find comfort. But I'm glad the same gate we came in by and the same door we came in by met the shepherd is still there calling us by our name and anointing us. Amen. And I'm glad Amen. for the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. 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 Now, disobedient to parents. Well, have you ever seen a day? I mean, I'll just I'll tell you what kind of day we're living in. Parents are obedient to children. Right. That's not biblical. Right. As a matter of fact, there ain't nothing godly about that tonight. You say, oh, but preacher, my young ones are innocent. Boy, if you only knew. <coughs> I mean, I'm just being honest with you tonight. I think we've got good young people in here. I think I've got good young ones. I believe that with all my heart. I love our young people. I love my girls tonight. Hey, but I'm just going to be honest with you. Satan would love nothing more than for me and April to turn our house over to charity and faith. Yeah. Amen. That would be idiotic. I mean, I don't know any other word to use tonight. It'd be foolish. Why? Because there's still a lot of things they don't know. <clears throat> and there's a lot of things that I don't know. But thank God for the Holy Ghost of God that is entrusted us and that is teaching us and that is leading us tonight. Amen. But disobedient to parents. Then notice what your Bible says. They're just simply unthankful. Boy, how unthankful are they? I mean, we all, don't, please don't get mad at me. We all talk about being blessed more than we ever deserve. Yes, sir. But how unthankful are we? Yes, Come on, brother. 
When's the last time that you had to ask God for daily bread? Yeah. Really? Now, when's the last time that you stopped from thanking God? Yes, sir. For unthankful. I know that there's a lot of things that goes on this time of year that you can't really trust whether it's right or wrong. You know, you see people out holding signs and, you know, in my flesh, you know, it says we will work for food. I'm thinking we'll go get a job. They don't nobody, nobody have any help anyway. You know, you can find a job anywhere. If, you, if you're able to work or you know, that you might could hold a broom, somebody will hire you. Yeah. That's, right. That's my flesh. But you know what? On the inside, how thankful I am. That that really ain't me standing out there. And 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 why why do I not deserve to be standing out? You're right. I'm thankful. But notice what it all leads to. Unholy. Unholy. Just the lack of the Lord Jesus Christ being made real in our life. Living a spirit filled life. What, what, what's going to change verses 1 and 2? Live, holy living. Living our life in a way that honors and pleases God. Look at verse number 3 tonight. I, I've, got to, I've got to hurry. I'll be here all night with this. But look at verse number 3. Without natural affection, do I need to go leap up? It's happening in our schools. Oh, mercy. It ain't even natural. It's, it, it, it's not natural. The affection... That we think we have in this world we live in is not even natural. Amen. It's not natural. This will really disturb a lot of people. But do you know that these people, they treat their animals better than they treat their siblings, their children, their yep. spouses? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, now listen, I know that Rover sits when you're telling to see him. <laughs> you know, he holds his paw up and you give him something to eat. But you do realize he's still a dog, right? Right. Right. And you realize the only reason Rover's holding, holding his paw up is because you're feeding him. Yeah. <coughs> you start treating Rover like you treat your husband, Rover start biting you. <laughs> it's not natural. Amen. It, it, it's, not, it's not natural. It's not natural for us to not know where our kids are at night and make sure the dog is in and out of the ring. That's not natural. Right. right. I'm just right. preaching to you, that's not natural. It's not, it's not natural to care more about those, those animals than we do about our own children. It's not natural to live and act like an animal rather than a born-again child of God's life. It's not natural. That's, right. That's not natural. Truth breakers, false accusers. Boy, have you ever seen a day? Man, they're after the church, they're after the man of God, they're after the people of God. False accusers, yeah. each and ten, despisers of those that are good. Boy, do you realize that? You, I mean, people ask this question all the time. I don't know how many times April's asked me, why, will, why would people act like that? Why would people do that? People go into a school and shoot it up and kill innocent young people. Why would people do that? I'll tell you why. Because they are despisers of those that are good. Why would some harlot that stole her life away, why would she run after some other man and uh, that is a husband and has children? I'll tell you why. Because they're a despiser of those that are good. Why are we dealing with the fact of, of, of sex trafficking and human trafficking? Why are we dealing with that? I'll tell you why. Because people are despisers of those that are good. We're living in an evil world. But can I say tonight that God and the work of God is still worth it? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you why. In just a few minutes. Notice that you see the perilous times. Won't you see the pleasurous traits tonight? The Bible says they're trading. They're high-minded. They're heady. They're high-minded. They're lover of pleasures more than lovers of God. Boy, isn't that so true? Amen. I mean, no matter how foolish it seems, no matter how sick it seems, <coughs> I know this is going to sound crazy. Tonight, we just come off a married tree not too long ago, and I'm looking across, I see married couples here, I can say this tonight, cleaning up and upset in front of our young people tonight. It's a shame that a man pays more attention to a magazine at the supermarket line or the Walmart line more than he does his own living, breathing wife. Yep. Amen. Amen. You know what that is? That's lovers of pleasure yes, more sir. than lovers 
of God. Amen. 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 You do understand. Hey, you can take a picture on your cell phone tonight, and there's enough apps on there, and there's enough whatever you, what's it called? To make it look like it ain't really you. Filters. Filters, <laughs> thank you. Have you ever seen somebody on social media and then you met them in person and it <laughs> couldn't have been the same person? <laughs> Now, when I was growing up, you know what it was called? It's called glamour shots. Yeah. Well, they went way beyond the glamour shot. Amen. I mean, you can put a filter on your phone. Amen. Some of you didn't know you could take a picture without a filter. <laughs> Bridget, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say you can doctor it up. Yeah. Well, if you can doctor it up on your cell phone, how much more do you think they can do with an airbrush? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. On the magazine cover. Yes, sir. Amen. That's good preaching. Amen. Amen. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Yes. Hey, listen, I, I, I can use myself as an example. I'll use this every day. Hey, why in the world would I even have a thought? That's my wife, the mother of my children. Hey, listen, born again. Hey, loves the Lord, loves me, loves our girl. Hey, listen, I, you said a preacher it ain't like that in my house, but it should be. It ought to be. Yeah. Tonight. You said a preacher, hey, listen, uh, you don't look like him, she don't look like him. It doesn't matter tonight. Thank God if you saw me in the morning, you wouldn't want to look like me. Come on, brother. If you spent her breath in the morning, you wouldn't want that to be you. <laughs> Richard, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say we're human. We all have faults. And we all have failures. But we ought to thank God for the goodness of God. Hey, listen, our home ought to be a haven of rest tonight. It ought to be a happy place to be in your life. And listen, holding hands, drinking a cup of tea. Hey, listen, reading the Bible again. It ought to be a joy. It ought to be happiness tonight. We're living in a world that is more about pleasure. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of God. We see the perilous times. We see the pleasures, traits. But if you'll notice this, look at verse 25. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Notice what your Bible said. From such turn away. We have powerless, powerless testimonies tonight. There's no power in it. You know why? Because it's not real. It's a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Hey, I'm just going to say it like this. If you can continually hold back from sharing your testimony, you may not have one. Uh -oh. It's powerless. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, there's been a lot of times I didn't want to say anything, but I could not say something. Why? Because the power within me is greater than the power yeah, around me. Amen. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the testimonies are powerless. Why? Because it's just a form. Amen. I just think I shared this. I think I did on the last marriage retreat with that. Do you realize that uh, anybody that's ever taken a CPR class that have these lifelike dummies? But you know what? You know what? You know what that makes that dummy different from us dummies? <laughs> Is it's lifeless. Yeah. Yes, sir. It looks just like the real thing. But there's no life in it. You know the only difference changes us from the world? Is the life that God gives Amen. us whenever He saves us. You know what that does? That makes for a powerful testimony. But if it's just a form of God, preacher, tell me what a form of God in this is, okay? You come into church and you leave church and you're faithful to church, you're faithful to the choir, you're faithful to your position, you're faithful to read your Bible. Hey, listen, you're faithful to do all those things because somebody is watching. But on the inside, there's no life there. That's a powerless testimony tonight. Hey, listen, I'll just be honest with you. If we're living where we ought to live, I'm not talking about wanting to be boaster. I'm not talking about wanting to be proud. But I, I'll say it again. If I were to get the microphone out tonight and say, look, I need about three or four people that could give a testimony of the goodness of God being saved by the grace of God. Hey, listen, I just want to hear how you got born again saved by the grace of God. Hey, listen, you ought not have to jump on your pew and say, pick me, pick me. Hey, but listen, you ought not be looking down on the floor. You ought not be looking behind you. Hey, listen, down on the inside of your soul, there ought to be something saying, boy, I hope I get to tell it. I hope I get to tell it. I hope I get to tell it. Why? Because there's a power on the inside of you that is greater than the power around you. Amen. I mean, we ought to be, hey, listen, we ought to be excited about it. Amen. Amen. We ought to want the opportunity to tell about who he is. Amen. Amen. It's a form of God. 
all around us tonight. I tried to share this. I think it was Sunday morning. I tried to share this with you. <clears throat> that badness will not be the only people in heaven. But born again believers will be the only ones in heaven. Right. Now there's a lot of denominations that I'm sure when we get to heaven, and April says this a lot of times. Now what if we get to heaven? And the Lord said, well, you could have done that right there. But, but we did. I mean, look at all we missed out. And there's a lot of people when they get to heaven, they're going to find out you shouldn't have done none of that stuff. You <laughs> but here's the thing about it. It's living a life that's just simply Christ honor. And we know tonight if it's not doctrinally sound, it's not God honor. Amen. Amen. I mean, there's just some things you don't have to second guess yourself on. There's some things you don't need to ask about. Amen. Amen. Right. For of this sort are they which crept into houses and lived captive with a captive stealing women, laden with sins, led away with different love. You know why they're able to do that? Because it's a form of God. Yes, sir. They didn't know that they was being led the wrong way because they didn't know what the right way was. Right. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Boy, isn't that, have you ever seen that in the world we're living in? People that know the Bible, I'm just going to be honest, they know the Bible and can quote more scripture than you and I can. Yes, sir. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They know a whole lot about the Bible, but they yet don't know the God of the Bible. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Look at your Bible here. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 9, but they shall proceed no further. For the folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose of faith, long suffering, charity, and faith. And uh, Moses gave an example, or we'll give them this, this, this example, given there in verse number 8, of how they were stood against Moses. <laughs> so these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. <clears throat> he said they're a reprobate concerning the faith. In other words, they've been given that. That they desired. Yes, sir. That was against the will of God. Lord turn them over to a river. So we see that there's powerless <clears throat> testimonies. I'm so amazed. I hope this makes good sense to you. I am so amazed at how we choose to live, knowing how we really could live if we just lived the Lord. Does that make good sense to you? Amen. I mean, we we <clears throat> who, who wants to live in a marriage? When you just fuss and fight all the time, when it could just simply be sweet, peaceful, and happiness if you just live for the Lord. Matter of fact, I'm just going to be honest with you. If I didn't really love God and I didn't really love my wife, I really wouldn't be standing here tonight. Right. <laughs> it just don't make good sense. Amen. My wife asked me when we get her for church. Don't help me answer this. She said, does it rain every Wednesday? I said, now it does. <laughs> and it won't rain on Thursdays. That's when we go to a cell down in King. It's always cold. It rains every every cell. I mean, they even changed it to every other Thursday they have to sell. It rains every other Thursday. <laughs> does it rain? I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. It was warm at my house. There's a coffee maker there. Anybody listening? Yeah. I didn't have no supper yet. That's why I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> Here's all I'm saying. It would have been real easy to stay at home, especially if I didn't have this in my heart. Come on, bro. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. And if you look around tonight, we got a whole lot that is sick. Yeah. But we're missing a lot of people in the last 22 years that become lovers of pleasure mm -hmm. more than lovers of God. You're right. Having the form of godliness, but denying the power of God. Don't do it because you think that's what the preacher wants to do. Do it because you love it. You're in love with God. Amen. How many times have you heard me to say that? Don't believe something because I tell you. Go home and study it out. Look at it. Take my example. Take what I'm preaching to you. But go home and check it. Make sure I'm telling you. Don't, don't ever just walk away and say, well, I'm the reason I believe because my preacher said that. Yes, sir. Don't ever go home and say, listen, here's our conviction. Here's the standard on how we're going to dress. Here's how we're going to read our Bible. Here's how we've got a family order. Because that's what the preacher said. No, hey, don't find it in your Bible. This is why the preacher said what he said. He's telling us the truth. It's right here in the Word of God. And we want to do it because of the Word of God. That way if I die or if I fall out on God, you still have the Bible to stand on tonight. Amen. That is your truth. It's not just your preacher. It's not just your man of God. Yes, I want to live a life before you that is an example that you want to follow. But don't let that be the only reason Amen. that you walk that way. 
powerless testimony. He says in verse 9 that they shall proceed no further for their folly shall manifest unto all men as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, man, of my purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, and grace. You know what? Just hang in there. It's worth it. Amen. It'll show up. Amen. Sooner or later, the truth will come out. Sooner or later, their folly will find them right where they said it was somebody else's fault. Yes. Just stand with the word. Amen. It's still worth it. It's still worth it. Notice this. We see the powerless testimonies. We see the pleasure traits. We see the perilous times. Look at this. Look at the look the look at the persecutions trials. Persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch and at Iconium at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. I just want to ask you now: Has anybody ever been persecuted above the deliverance of the Lord? Matter of fact, I don't believe we even know persecution anything like what Paul's talking Amen. about. Amen. I mean, we think if somebody calls us a holy road, yeah. oh Lord, yeah. they're persecuting. Yeah. Boy, I wish that's the only thing I'd ever been called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really mean that. <laughs> he said, What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall serve a person. But preacher, I don't want to suffer persecution. Well, keep living like you're living. You probably won't have to. If we quit reading our Bible, if we quit studying, if we quit praying, if we have hard to go to church, they probably won't say anything about it. Matter of fact, let's be honest with you, the devil probably won't even bother. Come on, brother. Yeah. I get real nervous when people never feel like they're battling the adversary. That means we're doing exactly what he wants us to do. My wife asked me this week, and we just laughed about it now. I mean, we're 22 years into pastoring here, and I'm 32 years into being saved. My wife's about a month, 29 days older than me, so she's probably 36 years into being saved. <laughs> she said this week, she said, you know what? It would probably scare me and you to death if something just went real smooth. <laughs> I said, you remember telling me a long time ago, if you ever look at me and say, I'm nervous about that, she said, I'm going to be in the fetal position, like in the tornado drill position. <laughs> I said, well, I'm just going to tell you, if anything goes smooth, that's just going to scare me to death. It's going to make me nervous. She said, well, please don't tell me if you think it's going smooth. <laughs> it just, it's, it's so happy. It's almost like you have to battle. Why? Because Satan don't like it. The last thing Satan loved for me to do is come in here and preach something like this to you tonight and go out and have a great day tomorrow. Amen. I mean, that just, that's going to rough, I mean, that's going to mess up this whole world. And you know what? I'm almost so used to it, I don't expect it to be a good day tomorrow. I'm just being, it's going to rain the key. I ain't looking for a good day. I'm just being honest. But evil men and seducers, watch your Bible, shall wax worse and worse deceiving me to see. Here's what we got to understand. I don't mean to bust your bubble like, but it ain't going to get no better Amen. in the world. Right. Yes, but it's getting better for the child of God. It's still worth it tonight. Amen. Amen. Why? But continue down on the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned. Here, here's exactly what I believe about Paul said. Really? I believe that's what Paul said. Really? Have y'all forgot who you learned these things on? Yes, sir. Have you forgot how that God has been faithful over and over again? And then all of a sudden, <coughs> all of a sudden, somebody comes in here, I mean, about half sideways, and tells you something, and you just say, oh, it's a new revelation. Mm -hmm. believe I'll, I believe I'll jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> Preacher Brian, can you believe this? We have been wrong for all these years. There's another way. There, there's more than one way. Oprah told me there's more than one way. <laughs> well, Oprah did say that. But guess what? My Bible said, let every man be a liar. And God's word be true. Amen. So if Oprah thinks there's more than one way, my Bible says there's one way. What's that make Oprah? A liar. A liar. You're right. <laughs> Amen. Preacher, you didn't just say she's the wealthiest woman alive, but she's wrong. Right? Amen. Amen. God's word is right. Amen. Paul said, "Really, you you really are going to believe this after knowing where you learned what you 
you learned and who you learned it from. <laughs> oh my! I, I guess what I guess what bothers me the most is it's been preached against, it's been stood against, and then all of a sudden they act like they've had some kind of revelation. They never apologize for preaching wrong. They never apologize for standing wrong. But all of a sudden they've changed their direction. That's not godly to me. That's not buying. In fact, he said in verse 14, but continue that. In the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing, of whom thou hast learned. There's been times, and you can ask my wife about this, you can ask my children. There's been times, even faith a few days ago, she said, that I'm just going to be honest with you. It's, I'm not saying I'm confused. The whole situation's confused. And I said, well, we know where that came from. Now, let's proceed from that. We know, we know who the author of that is. Now let's proceed from that. And finally, here's where I got to. All right? I can't explain it completely. I got Bible on my stand where I stand. I cannot completely explain the whole situation. But I can tell you this. God's blessed us and our home and our family for standing right here. Mm -hmm. Why would I move? Yes, sir. Amen. Why would I? If, if God is honoring this, why would I change that? Yeah. Amen. 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 Paul said, but continue that in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Hey, listen, I'm glad I had a man of God that stood and preached me the truth. But I'm glad the learning process yeah. came from the Holy Ghost yeah. of God. Amen. Boy, I'm so thankful for that. Hey, listen, I, 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 I know some of the men can agree with me now. I learned a lot of things down at the Bible college. Things that I didn't know, things I still don't know, and things I'm probably not real sure about. But here's what I can say. I know that the Holy Ghost is the one at 14-year-old. Came along, taught me how to read, and gave me guidance and direction through His power and His Spirit. And that's what I'm assured in tonight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise in the salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. I'm just going to be honest with you tonight, sir. We have no excuse. Right. Most of us grew up with multiple numbers of Bibles in our home from the time we was a child. If we don't go to church in our area, it's simply because we don't desire to. We've had grandmas and great-grandmas and grandpas and men of God that have preached us the truth, lived us the truth all of our life. Amen? You're right. From a child that has known the Holy Spirit, which are able to make you wise and savage through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Let me give you this last one tonight. We see that there are persecutions, trials, there's powers, uh, uh, testimonies tonight. There's pleasures, traits, and there's perilous times. But notice this, tonight. there's simple, profitable truths. Well, I'm glad it's still worth it tonight. Watch this, there's profitable truths. Verse 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Boy, we ought to shout victory right there tonight. Amen. You know what that simply means tonight? Hey, listen. I, I, and I know some of the young people. I know if I called Chandler up here, he'd say, Preacher, just throw the whole thing with him. I was talking about school books. He says, Oh, man, throw, throw the whole thing with him. They can just hang on it bad. And then just the first chapter bad. Preacher, the whole thing bad. Throw it away. Amen. <laughs> I know there's some subjects that some of the young people say, Ain't no sense. I don't even know why we have to take that. Don't even make no look. Reagan's grinning from here to here. <laughs> I mean, he's trying to think of a way to tell his mama it's all garbage. I don't even know why I need to go to mom. <laughs> and so, I mean, just start all of it. It's all done. But do you realize tonight, and this is the honest truth, you, you can go to our children's school book and you can find things that they're trying to teach, <coughs> even tonight, about in the <coughs> that a man just simply made up, had enough people that agreed with him, and they went along with it. Amen. And they just believe. They, they just, they just, Believe it to be true. Matter of fact, do you know that the first tooth that was ever found, that they created a whole dinosaur, I mean the whole body of a dinosaur, out of this tooth? Do you realize that that tooth actually came when it was tested from a pig? But he had enough people to believe him. And he had enough people that went along with it. And guess what? There's enough people to actually believe 
that we came from a tadpole in the water. Right. You're right. Yes, sir. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> All scriptures give me inspiration. You know what that means tonight? There's not one dot. You're right. Not yes, one tip. Yep. Not one abbreviation mark. Not one period. Not one piece of punctuation in your Bible that needs to be removed. Amen. Every word is in its own place for a purpose. It's inspired of God. Notice what it said. It's given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, <coughs> for instruction. And I, that's why I'm saying tonight, I'm glad for the profitable truth. Let's just believe the Bible. If the Bible says this is how you have a godly home, and we want a godly home, let's do it in the Bible way. If God's Word said this is the way you raise children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, then let's not do it the way the world says do it. Let's do it the way God says do it. Amen. If we want a church service where it's spirit-filled and the people are spirit-filled and lost souls are saved and church members are, are excited and revived and stirred and reminded of where they've been brought from, then let's do it Bible way if we want Bible services. Amen. Notice this. It's for reproof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness. And then last but not least, look at verse 27. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good work. You know what the Bible's doing tonight? It's just simply completing the masterpiece of the Lord. Yeah. You really are, you really are created in the very likeness and the image of God. You really are, in Ephesians chapter number 2, we really are the workmanship. Oh, Lord, we really are his handiwork, his crafty work tonight. We, we really, uh, Brother Willie uh, made a few knives the other day, and he was showing them to, to, to Miss April. And you know what that was? That was, the, that was his handiwork. I mean, he really did that. He really made that. And the awe and the amazement, he really did that. You realize tonight, looking at you and I and where we were and where we are tonight, Amen. God really did that. Yeah. Man didn't do that. Man did not do that. The world didn't do that. God really put his hand on us. Amen. We are his workers. I'll say this. It's a proper truth. Boy, aren't you glad tonight that there's value Amen. in the truth. Yeah. <coughs> hey, listen, I don't know what you're battling. I don't know what you're facing. But I do know this tonight. Child of God, it's still worth it. Amen. Amen. It's still worth it. Amen. We're in this thing for the Lord. We're pressing on for the glory of God. It's still worth it tonight. Amen. It's still worth it. I'm going to ask you to stand all across the house. All that will, all that want to tonight. Let's just gather around the altar and have a word of prayer around the altar tonight. It's still worth it. Amen. For the child of God, thank God. It's still worth it.